It's what she wants to hear. It's what any woman wants to hear. Oh, you sound like you're doing the right thing. You'll be fine. But it's not the truth. Any advice you give on relationship or business should be consultative. It should be based on that person's requirement, that person's behavior. And this is a problem I have with a lot of the dating coaches on YouTube. They, they say things that their, their audience want to hear. And in terms of marketing, it's good. I could sit here and be like, darling, you're beautiful souls and any man would be lucky to have you. But how do I know that? I don't know what you're doing. Therefore, I am in no position to say sweeping statements like Matthew Hussey is. This is Matthew Hussey from Love Life. We have another caller on the line today. Uh, your name is Kalani, am I right in saying that? Correct, Correct yes. Yeah. Kalani, good to speak to you. What was your question? So, I am really puzzled by modern day commitment. Um, it seems that like people have a really hard time committing these days. Like There's always something better out there. and I'm sure social media has a lot to do with it. People comparing their lives to others. Um, I know in LA where I live, there's a lot of men have Peter Pan syndrome and they don't want to grow up. <laughs> but it makes me weary to get into a relationship because I feel like, you know, People are always kind of worried about maybe there's something better out there, and, and commitment just doesn't seem to be as honored as it used to be, and, and it's causing me some fear into getting into relationships. And I think I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, um, how I can maybe work through some of that and be more trusting. <laughs> yeah, that's a, well, two, that's a great two-part question. I mean, firstly, I think in general people are worse at committing to anything these days. I think people are worse at committing to careers. Uh, I think they're worse at committing to a life path. I think they're worse at committing to marriage. I think we, we have uh, shorter attention spans, and it also we have, I think, a certain level of entitlement these days uh, that makes us feel like we're entitled to a job that is amazing and exciting the whole time, and as soon as it's not, we feel like we need to quit and move on to something else. I think we uh, feel like we're entitled to a relationship that isn't any work, that's supposed to be easy, and then as soon as it's not, we start looking for the next thing. Uh, and not to mention, if you live in a place like LA, and people in London or New York or many major cities will all relate to this, you do face a lot of people with a lot of different options. And mm -hmm. everything is, it's ev in, in a city like this, it's everything all the time. It's everything always. You can have whatever you want any time of day. You can go out every night of the week. There are always new people. There's an endless stream of them. And there's always something else going on. And that makes it somewhat difficult. Now, what we have to understand is that there are different experiences of life. There's the experience, for example, of going out and sleeping with multiple people and having a kind of roster of people on the go that you enjoy and you're just seeing where that takes you and you have all the variety that comes with that. Then you have the experience which is being with one person and sharing your day with them and figure, finding out how they are when they get home and telling them how you are when you get home. And you know, you go and you go and do something with that person and you can really relate to them because you know them. You share your news with them and you want to share your news because they know how hard you worked for that promotion that you're now excited about. Unlike the person you met last week who doesn't care. There's a different experience. People grow and as they mature, or hopefully mature, not every guy does, but as they mature, they start to have, uh, they value experiences differently. Some people go through their lives and they begin to truly value that sense of real meaning and connection that comes with being with one person. Other people, by the way, never get to that stage. I actually, huh. I truly believe that that's the mon minority. I think that most people actually- I agree with that. I agree with that. I think most people do reach a point regardless of how much materialistic wealth they have around them. I think everyone at some point, or most people at some point, they want that fulfillment from connection. They want that fulfillment through love. So I, I do agree with that. We are social creatures, we can't help it. ...actually get to a point where they want more meaning in their lives. That's, that's, that's very good to hear, because that, that's kind of what I was wondering is, you know, how as things have changed, you know, when I think of my parents in the 60s or whatever, it was such a natural thing to commit to somebody, and that's what you did, and now it mm. seems more unnatural to do that, because, you know, divorce is prevalent and things, but I think, like you're saying, inherently maybe in humans, like, people ultimately do want a quality experience, and so it just does, it's like a maturity thing then. It is, and... and it's, 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 no, 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 darling, da, 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 da. no. In the 60s, people committed because they just dated who was around them. It was less accepted in society to break up with someone or divorce someone. It was seen as like this, this abnormal thing. If you look at a chart of the divorce rate, let me pull it up, okay? You'll see in the 50s, 60s, very low. Boom, in the 70s, 80s, high, and it's, it's gone down in the 21st century. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have dating apps, and therefore they dated out of scarcity. Just because people committed more in the 60s does not mean A, they were happy, it does not mean B, the person they picked was the perfect optimal person for them. Not that you can ever find this person, but I would definitely say in today's day and age, you have a much higher chance of finding someone who you're more compatible with than back then. Because back then, again, when you're dating out of scarcity and you, you're only limited to the people around you, statistically, you are less likely to find someone who is more compatible with you. So that's why people committed more back then. It's not necessarily a good thing get skewed because I think that most guys will get to a point where they want more meaning uh, with the minority never wanting more meaning or, or having some sort of problem internally that stops them from from accessing that part of themselves uh -huh, uh -huh. here's where the results get skewed many guys because of this sense of entitlement where we think god I, before I get to a certain age I have to have played around enough I have to have traveled enough I've had to have had a ton of adventure I need to have made a certain amount of money I need to be in a certain place in my status in my career they have all of these things that they feel like they need to check off before they meet the woman that they're gonna spend their life with and settle down here's the problem despite this sense of entitlement many of them never achieve all of those things by the time they meet that woman 
Right. So all of a sudden they're meeting this amazing woman and they think, God, I could marry this woman. I could spend my life with this woman. If only I'd been to all those countries I already wanted to go to. If only I felt like I'd played around enough, had enough adventure. If only I'd already made that money that I said I'd make it. You know, I said I'd be a millionaire by 30. I'm not. I need to keep going with that. They have all of these things that they feel like they haven't done yet when they meet that person. And all of a sudden they find themselves sabotaging mm -hmm. a relationship, not because the relationship's wrong, but because they feel like they haven't arrived at that place in their life just yet. <sighs> Mm. <laughs> it's so profound because it doesn't ask her to do any introspective analysis on herself to figure out if maybe the reason men won't commit to her is potentially because of her. And this is what's dangerous about what Matthew Hussey is saying. It's what my audience demographic want to hear, but it's not what you should hear. Because any advice you give on relationship or business should be consultative. It should be based on that person's requirement, that person's behavior and that person's actions. How can he possibly take the reason as to why men aren't committing to her and putting it on an entire gender saying, oh, it's because of this. She could be doing the right things and it could be that the men around her just aren't right and they don't want to commit. However, how would he know that unless he has asked her questions about how she behaves with men? How do we know she's not being too needy? How do we know she's not got too much aggressiveness or masculinity and it's turning men off and not making them not want to commit. How do we know that she doesn't have fulfillment elsewhere that is causing her to require it, to feel like it's a necessity in her life, which naturally subcommunicates needy vibes? We don't know this. He doesn't know this. So it's dangerous to give blanket advice like that and blame it on an entire gender, which is pleasant on the ear. It's pleasant on the ear to hear advice that doesn't make you take an introspective look at yourself and thinks, okay, it's due to that gender or it's due to that group of people. Therefore, I don't have to do any analysis or change myself. Let's carry on listening. It's, I think so, true. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. It's very, very tough. Yeah. So yeah, here's, tough. here's the key. It's, the key isn't about trusting more. I think I think the idea of trust is is actually misguided in many cases. The onus isn't on you to just trust people blindly. That's dumb. Okay. That, that's okay. what ends up with you being murdered in a dark alley somewhere. It's just, I just trust everyone, right? Okay. You don't just trust people. What you do is you allow people to earn your trust mm -hmm. and you give them the chance in the first place. That's all it is. I'm gonna allow you to put in that 5% of, of the amount of effort that allows you to get 5% of my trust, then 10%, 15% and so on. That's how any relationship is built. You don't start with the trust, you build the trust. So mm -hmm. any guy that's gonna be worthy of you has to show that he's worthy of you by the investment that he puts in and by showing you that he's actually interested in the same mm -hmm. things that you're interested in. I agree with that. I agree with that. In, in terms of a relationship. That's gonna be built over time. The easiest thing you can do for yourself is to look for guys in the right stage of their lives in instead of trying to convert guys in the wrong stage of their lives. So, now, so, so true. If you wanna find a guy in the right stage of his life or you wanna find out if a guy is in the right stage of his life, simply ask him the right questions. When you're early on, ask him, you know, what's, are you interested in, in a relationship at this mm. stage in your life? Or do you feel like you still have more that you wanna get out of your system? No. Uh, if you talk about his past relationship, why did you break up with that person? That'll tell you a lot, by the way. Does he talk about it being, you know, he's the reason that they broke up because he wasn't ready for a relationship or is it because of something that she was doing and therefore he just hadn't found the right person? If you ask the questions, he'll give you the answers. Most women never ask the questions. And so they never get the truth from a guy because they don't want to hear it. True, so, that's true. so just go and be smart about it. I, I, you know, I, you're going to be fine because you're, you're clearly an intelligent person. You clearly want the result and you're clearly measured. You're not biased. You just want to find someone great. So keep going out there. Keep your chin up. And when you talk to guys, measure them based on their investment, uh, not based on what you want them to be. Okay. Do measure them based on their investment. Fair point. But two big problems in what he's just said. He said, you sound intelligent and measured, so you'll get what you want. That's bad advice. He knows nothing about her. He knows nothing about how she behaves with men. And although she does sound intelligent and articulate, that, has, that, is, that is completely exclusive to the fact that she could have many, many problems internally that is subcommunicating the wrong vibes to men that make them not want to commit with her. He can't possibly know that. Unless they've spoken off air and he's consulted her and he's asked her questions, he can't possibly be saying that to her. It's what she wants to hear. It's what any woman wants to hear. Oh, you sound like you're doing the right thing. You'll be fine. But it's not the truth, okay? Um, and this is a problem I have with a lot of the dating coaches on YouTube. They they say things that their, their audience want to hear. And in terms of marketing, it's good. I could sit here and be like, darling, all of you, you're beautiful souls and any man would be lucky to have you. But how do I know that? I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're trying to improve yourself. I don't know the vibes you are subcommunicating. Therefore, I am in no position to say sweeping statements like Matthew Hussey is. Another thing he said that I disagree with is you do not ask a man, are you ready for a relationship right now? Because although he may logically give you the, an answer you want to hear, that is subject to change. Like I say all the time, people's words are subject to change based on the vibe, based on an emotion they are feeling. The second the environment and the emotion they are feeling changes, so does the 
statement that they said retrospectively. And therefore, what it is you should do is you should make a man want to commit by your behavior, by the value you have internally and by the value that you offer him, not by asking a logical question, are you at that point in your life where you want to commit? There are people who are at a point in their life and you would think they don't want to commit, but for the right person, they would commit. So it's not about asking them if they're ready to commit. It's about asking them about them, understanding them as a person, finding out if you want to commit to them first and then offering them value based on what it is that they want in their life, what it is that makes them happy, what it is that they enjoy doing with you to make them want to commit with, to you. Not, not this logical, dynamic, binary thing. He makes men sound like we're these robots who are like, am I at the point I want to commit because I have done all of these things? We're not like that, okay? Similar to women, we can also want to commit just based on someone, based on how someone makes us feel. So, so yeah, this is this is ropey dating advice to be giving. I think it's dangerous. It doesn't make people take an introspective look at themselves. It's not consultative by giving answers based on stuff that she's going through or asking her questions to find out if potentially she's doing something wrong. And it's also dangerous because he's making men sound too binary, A and. There are a lot of men out there who would commit to someone. People commit to someone based on the value that person can offer them. So it's about value. It is always about value. Relationships and business is all about value. We do business with people and we date people who give us value, who have value to offer us, okay? It is that simple. I'll see you in tomorrow's video.